Hello, my name is Laura and I'm one of the exercise professionals working in cardiac rehabilitation. The aim of this presentation is to discuss the benefits of being active and to inform you on how you can become more active following a heart event. So why do we need to be more active? Heart and circulatory diseases kill one in four people in the UK. Not being active has been shown to be a reason that people have heart attacks and strokes and therefore physical inactivity is considered to be a significant risk factor for coronary heart disease. It is also listed as one of the main causes of disability in the UK. In the UK, 39% of adults, which is around 20 million people, are not meeting the recommended levels of physical activity. And our audit used in cardiac rehabilitation has been shown that physical inactivity is relevant to around 80% of the people we meet. Reasons for inactivity is due to more sedentary hobbies during leisure time, an increase in sedentary jobs, and an increase in passive forms of transport. So what are the benefits of being more active? Being active can have immediate impact on your health and evidence has shown it can improve your quality of life. Changes include having more energy, feeling less stressed and anxious, feeling more relaxed, getting a healthier body shape and appearance. You may also sleep more easily, have better concentration levels have better self-esteem and confidence. Physical activity can also prevent chronic conditions such as type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure and some cancers such as colon cancer and having joint and bone problems such as arthritis and osteoporosis. It can also help reduce the risk of falls and help maintain independence as we get older. There are several more specific benefits to your heart from being more active. After a period of training, your heart becomes stronger, meaning that it doesn't have to beat as frequently. Improvements in blood pressure are also seen, and a lower heart rate and lower blood pressure in turn helps to reduce the workload on the heart and ultimately helps to reduce the risk of angina or being able to do more before the onset of angina. Regular exercise can also help to stable the electrics of the heart, therefore helping to reduce the risk of irregular heart rhythms. It can also reduce the stickiness of the blood, making the blood less likely to clot and cause a heart attack or a stroke. There is some research to show that exercise can lower our bad cholesterol and increase our good cholesterol. This means that it can help to reduce further progression of heart disease over time. Research has shown that we need to do a minimum of 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity a week. This is approximately half an hour spread over five days of the week. In addition, aim to do exercises that help strengthen all our major muscle groups twice a week. Older adults at risk of falls should incorporate physical activity to improve balance and coordination. What is important, however, is that we set realistic goals to begin with for some people to start with, it may be simply a case of trying to reduce the amount of time we spend sitting. Practical suggestions include using the stairs more frequently, moving around the house every hour to do light duties, parking further away in the car park. For those who are able to do more, an easy, practical way to remember how much aerobic exercise we need to do is to think about the FIT principle. F is for frequency, so your ultimate goal is to build up to five times per week. I is for intensity, and you should feel yourself breathing a little bit heavier, deeper and quicker, but you should still be able to have a conversation. You should feel warmer, feel the effort in your muscles, as well as a general feeling of overall bodily effort. Your activity should never feel like maximal exertion. T is for type. So cardiovascular or aerobic exercise trains the heart and lungs and it is performed in a rhythmical way using large muscle groups such as your legs. Examples of this include walking and cycling. T is for time. So aim to build up to 20 to 40 minutes of continuous exercise. However, this can be broken down into 10 to 15 minute chunks or three times throughout the day. Strength and flexibility exercises are important too. Strength exercises make your muscles work harder. 
Examples of this can include walking up the stairs, carrying shopping or performing exercises with a resistance band or weight. These should be performed ideally twice a week. Flexibility exercises help to stretch your muscles and maintain or improve your range of movement in a joint or in a series of joints. These can be performed every day. We recommend that you should start your exercise slow and steady and build up towards an exercise level over the first 10 to 15 minutes. This is referred to as a warm up. This is important to prepare the heart for exercise. At the end of the exercise bout, it is recommended that you slow your pace down gradually, again over 10 minutes. This is what we call a cool down and it's important to help to return the body to its resting state. Other tips to stay safe include, don't do physical activity if you feel unwell, wear comfortable clothes and shoes and exercise in a comfortable environment. Stop if you feel pain, feel dizzy or feel unwell. Have your GTN available for those who have been prescribed one. Small amounts of physical activity can provide immediate benefits to our health. Regular structured exercise can also prevent and manage chronic diseases such as heart disease, lung disease, diabetes and joint and bone conditions. But most importantly, exercise and activity is something to enjoy. We believe that there is a style of exercise to suit all needs and we want to help you. So please speak to a member of the Cardiac Rehab team to discuss realistic goals for you and ways that you can become more active.